Want the best chance at banking as many extra marks as possible on paper one? Well, keep watching because I'm going to be talking you through key strategies to implement in paper one AQA A level biology, which is now only two days away. Hey everyone, and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. And I hope you're doing well. Revision is going well. And I wanted to remind you that if you aren't already signed up, I am doing a live lesson the night before paper one, Wednesday, the 4th of June, 6 till 7 p.m. In that session we're going to be focusing on the extended response questions which are the long answer questions worth 15 marks at the back of the paper. So if you want to have the best possible chance at smashing and getting those 15 marks to really bump up your grade, make sure you're signed up because we're gonna be going through some really good tips and tricks and so much practice to prepare for the potential questions that might come up on that exam. Links in the description below. Make sure you're there because you get to come live. You also get the recording and you get all the exam questions and resources that I use within that session. So let's get into my main advice for paper one. The first one if you have ever seen my old videos you know what this is going to be and that is start at the back for aqa a level biology paper one at the back there are 15 marks of extended response questions that's what i'm doing in my live pick a mix lesson on wednesday night and those questions are usually split into three so you'll have either a five five and a five marker adding up to 15 in total or a four a six and a five adding up to 15 in total but you're guaranteed it will be 15 marks. And those questions are pretty much always A01, meaning testing your knowledge. So it might be a describe, explain, compare, contrast. So the reason I say to start at the back is those types of questions, A01, students usually gain more marks on because if you have done your revision and you follow the tips and tricks I'm going to go through in this video, plus in the extra detail in my pick and mix lesson, then you have the best possible chance to bank those 15 marks immediately. Whereas if you actually started at the front and worked your way through, if you ran out of time for whatever reason, you then won't even get onto or maybe won't finish those long answer questions at the back, which are usually a lot easier than the questions before that, which are data analysis and application, which are like the penultimate two questions in the paper in particular. So essentially you want to start at the back to bank what are typically the easier marks to gain than some of the other marks so you can get in your pocket hopefully at least 10 to 15 marks straight away and boost your confidence knowing you've got that sorted. So I want to know that in paper one you hear everyone rustle and go straight to the back and follow that advice and get those 15 marks immediately. Number two, bullet point your answers. You are allowed to bullet point every single question on this paper so please do it because it will save you time. You'll be more concise and therefore hopefully more accurate with your answer and you can really check have I got enough bullet points for the number of marks this question is worth and in every bullet point have I got what I think is a key term or key marking point point. and if you're not sure what those are I go through all of the key terms and key marking points in my flashcards but I point them out in all my theory videos as well so please make sure you are bullet pointing your answer and that is really important for the long answer questions at the back so if you've got a five marker you want to have at least five bullet points probably six just so you've got an insurance one and if you do have a compare or a contrast question you can present that as a table as well that is absolutely fine for paper one as long as you've got the correct information that is stated on the mark scheme doesn't matter how you present it as long as they can read it tip number three is don't panic if you see an unfamiliar context question or experiment you will get application questions on this paper which i know you're aware of but just as a reminder as you're flicking through looking at the questions if you see something and you're like i have no idea what that is going on about or what the question could be take a breath remember this moment and think I do this is an application question I just need to take a minute and think about from what they've told me what topic or practical is this linking to that I know about and if you're not sure just read the rest of the question and there might be something that comes up later in the question that hints or gives you that idea to remember what it might be referring to number four be specific
specific with your answers. I'm sure I don't need to tell you just how specific the mark schemes are. They are so specific that it has to be word for word or matching definitions or descriptions from the specification. That's what they want in the mark scheme. So if you haven't looked at your AQA specification yet, please have a look at it over the next two days. In particular, go through with a highlighter, whether this is a digital copy or printed, looking for anywhere where they say a key term and what that key term means. Because if you see that in the spec, that's word for word what the mark scheme will want you to say. Now, as well as that, when I say be specific, make sure you are giving enough detail. So for example, make sure you're not just saying membrane. You need to say, well, is that the cell surface membrane? Is that an organelle membrane? Are you talking about the phospholipid bilayer in the membrane? So whatever the point is that you're making, try and make sure you're giving the full answer every time. Another key one to look out for is rather than just saying that ATP provides energy, make sure you're saying that it is the hydrolysis of ATP that releases the energy. And then the other key thing to think about is making sure you've got those comparative words in there if you need to. So things like saying more, higher, smaller, longer, greater than. So make sure if there is some sort of comparison or adaptation, you're not just saying there are mitochondria in that cell. It might be there are more mitochondria in that cell. So more ATP can be released. So more energy can be released for whatever it might be. Number five, always answer the actual question you've been asked. And to make sure that I do this, I would always highlight or underline the command words. Read the question slowly, make making sure you're fully processing what is being asked of you. If they've said describe, make sure you are only describing and giving an account and not saying why, because that is explain. And look out for the questions where there are two command words. They might say, suggest a reason and explain it. So you would have to do both parts to get the mark. Also look carefully. If they say use all the information, that will mean not just the information from this subsection of the question, it could be from any point in that question. So look back over all the information you've been given. And also, if they specifically tell you the number of responses they want you to give, so for example, suggest two reasons why, only give two. If you give more than two and they've asked specifically for two in the question, let's say you did give three, you gave two correct suggestions and one incorrect suggestion, you are now only going to get one mark because your incorrect response will negate your correct one. So you shouldn't give more responses if you've been explicitly asked for a certain number, because if you do give more and some are correct and some are wrong, you're basically asking the examiners to look through all of it and just pick out the correct ones and ignore the wrong ones, which examiners aren't allowed to do because it's not them being assessed, it's you. And therefore, for every incorrect one you write, it negates a correct one for that reason, because you can't ask the examiners to pick and choose, which you're basically doing if you give more than you've been asked for. And number seven, you don't need to know everything and you won't know everything. So seriously, no one gets full marks. I get asked quite commonly, if I did my A-levels now, would I get full marks? No way would I get full marks. No one would get full marks. There's always going to be a question that is going to throw you. That is common. There's never going to be 100% of questions on the A-level biology paper that you come out of thinking, I nailed every single one of those. And plus, there'd always be a question where maybe you've got the idea, but you're not completely certain you've got every single mark and that is fine. The grey boundaries don't state you need 100% to get an A star. They're usually in the mid 60s to mid 70s for an A star, which means you can get at least 25% of it wrong and still get an A star. So please don't panic in the exam thinking, oh, I do not know this question, that's it, it's all ruined. It's fine and it's expected. Just take a deep breath, have your best attempt at it and see if you can pick up at least a couple of marks. So that is it for my final tips for paper one in two days time. And don't forget, you can still get some last minute booster help from me at my pick a mix lesson, which is tomorrow, 6 to 7 p.m. Link is in the description below. I'll be thinking of you in the exam and please come back and post on this video to let me know how it went after. Good luck everyone!